Welcome to this short presentation on painting ideas, hints for academic presentations. My name is Amelia Coe Butler and I'm the Mission Secretary for Education with the Council for World Mission. As with worship liturgy, you can think in terms of gather, hear, respond and send. I think about presentations from a Trinitarian perspective, Father, Son, Spirit, or creator, redeemer, comforter. In the introduction, you can create community with God's people. You identify who is present, that is you, the researcher, the audience of curious academics, and God. In the body of the presentation, you describe the human issues, the methods and findings, and your theological reflections. In the conclusions, you offer gospel, good news about possible ways forward and how this research can contribute to God's life flourishing mission. So why this research? Remember your presentation is about your research, not your life story. What is the question this research is seeking to answer? What was the problem that led me to this research? Who am I and why do I care? Why this presentation, for example? I was troubled at a recent conference by several problems. Presenters spent more energy on their introductions than their research. They were giving opinions and making unsubstantiated generalizations rather than taking us on a journey of discovery. And presenters presented data without analysis, evaluation or theological reflection. So what does this research uh, mean? What difference does it make? When we attend academic conferences, we go to learn, to network, to test our ideas, to get feedback. Conferencing is important for academic development. But attending conferences is a first step and we waste time and energy if we do not maximize our learning. So why should you be interested? As a result of this presentation, what I hope you will take away is I hope you will pay attention to how to get a presentation accepted for a conference. I hope you will become more confident at giving short, sharp presentations to academic audiences. I hope you will carefully choose what you share and consolidate the main messages so they do not become too lost in the peripheral bits of information. I hope your preaching and sermon delivery will be strengthened. And I hope you will better understand what to put on slides and notes and what belongs in fully developed papers. So, the body of the presentation should engage both the human and the divine. It's like the body is research incarnate. You can start or give example stories about the human issues you are addressing. You should explain the methods of how did you get these stories and summarize the findings of your research. And then you should theologically reflect on the stories and findings. A good way to look at this is what theological doctrines are important when looking at your findings? What biblical stories are important for you to reflect with? How did this change how we respond to God's mission? And that leads us to spiritual discernment. What are the gospel ways forward? Your analysis should lead to conclusions. What is the good news in this situation? How do we further God's mission? What needs to change? and what further work needs to be done. People have different learning strengths. After this presentation, you can Google multiple intelligence strategies of learning and teaching. It will help you to engage different people with your subject matter. Some people respond to pictures and images or diagrams. Some people respond to stories. 
Some people like numbers. Others have a switch in their heads that lights up with nature. Some respond to music. Some need movement. And some will only get involved when there is questioning and conversation. If you get 20 minutes at a conference, plan how the time will be used. Presentations are almost always running over and discussion time is needed for critical feedback. Q&A time, question and answer, is valuable for you to get your feedback. So do not fill out all your time. Your speaking should fill maybe 70 to 80% of your allocated time. Your slides should only highlight main points of your speech. And pictures should be used to help people keep focused on your meaning. You should in conclude with something provocative or new. How do you offer an insight that challenges others? To get the best feedback, your Q&A time should start with your prompting wondering questions. From what I have said, what resonates for people? What are the areas for further research or what other research does this connect with? Do people see uses for this research in their contexts? And how else could we further this kind of work? In summary, your paper needs to be like a well-constructed essay, but your presentation is not the essay itself. In your presentation, limit the words on the slides. Don't just read what is on the screen. Use graphics, stories, objects to help illustrate your words and engage your audience. You may have noticed that I used colours to delineate different parts of this presentation. Practice the presentation as if it is a memorised sermon and record a practice video and watch it back with friendly scholars and ask, what works and how can this be improved? Prepare a link to more information and your references. People can leave comments for you and your final paper can also be published on your blog or your website. So I would like to invite our CWM scholars to start preparing papers for 2024 on the theme, Life Flourishing Mission of God. Doctoral scholars are invited to submit a 20 minute video presentation. Master scholars are invited to submit a 10 minute video presentation and abstracts to be submitted with the video can be 300 to 350 words. Presentations will be reviewed and a selection will be made to feature on the CWM gatherings and website.